With the Rare World Championships coming to an exciting conclusion in Florence, we give you the lowdown on the garment everyone's been fighting for, the rainbow jersey. The rainbow jersey is awarded to the winner of each UCI World Championship event. The jersey is worn by riders across all six disciplines of cycling for which the World Championships are hosted, from road to mountain bike, cyclocross, track and BMX. It's probably the most coveted garment in cycling, perhaps even more so than the yellow jersey of the Tour de France. Unlike the Grand Tours, where the leader's jersey will only be worn during the race, the world champion bears the distinctive colours for a full year until the next championships come around. Previous winners are given the option to commemorate their win by sporting rainbow stripe piping on the collar or sleeves of their regular jersey. They can wear this until the end of their careers. Athletes may only wear the world champion's jersey when taking part in the event in which they won it. For example, Tony Martin won individual time trial gold in Florence, which means he'll only sport the rainbow stripes during individual time trial events next year. This is why so much emphasis is placed on the road race, as they will get the most opportunity to sport the rainbow jersey. In fact, the UCI can impose fines of up to 10,000 Swiss francs for breaking the strict guidelines surrounding the misuse of the rainbow jersey. Sadly, winners of the team time trial don't all get to wear rainbow stripes, they just have to settle for a gold medal and a logo on their jersey. Nicky Terpstra doesn't seem too unhappy about it though. Cycling's world championships have strong links with the Olympic movement, and the five bands you see around the jersey are the same colours as the Olympic rings. Much mystery surrounds the origins of the rainbow jersey, but the original colours were designed by the founder of the Olympic movement, Baron Pierre de Coubertin. He used the most commonly used colours on national flags around the world to try and create a symbol of international relevance. Riders who make the podium in the World Championships also win a respective UCI gold, silver or bronze medal. The first UCI Road Cycling World Championships were born in 1927, with Italian Alfredo Binder winning the first of his three men's road race titles. This was the first professional Road to World Championships an amateur equivalent of the event had actually been running since 1921. Both amateur and professional races ran alongside each other right up until 1996, when the amateur road race became the under-23 road race. Dutchman Danny Nillison will go down in the history books as being the last amateur champion in 95. The junior men's race followed in 1975 and then the junior women's in 1987. Interestingly enough, the time trials were a fairly recent addition to the Road World Championships. It wasn't until 1994 in Agrigento that the first elite time trial winners were crowned. The respective junior and under 23 titles had all become established by 1997. For all the prestige that comes with it, the curse of the rainbow jersey has become a popular debate in the cycling fraternity. Poor form, long-term injury and even death have befallen the previous world champions and some believe it has something to do with the jersey. 2012 winner Philippe Gilbert recently played down the notion of a curse, but admits it has not made it easier for him to achieve success because of the heightened expectation and that everybody in the peloton will be watching his every move. Incidentally, not all rainbow jersey wearers have experienced bad luck. The likes of Bernardino and Greg Lamont won the Tour de France the year after becoming world champion. Is it a curse or just coincidence? Let us know in the comments section below. Did you know? The record for the most Road World Championship titles in a career belongs to Frenchwoman Gianni Longo, who took an amazing five road race wins and four time trial golds during an incredibly long career. Switzerland's Fabian Cancellara was next off, and he set a blistering pace for the opening kilometres. Faster than everyone at the first time check, it was looking like the four-time champion might regain his time trial crown. 